The fields are on fire in eastern Ukraine. Homes have been pummeled, the factories ablaze. As the Russians move on two cities here, Severodonetsk and its twin, Lusychansk. And all those who come here must make this unnerving drive. We are exposed here. This is probably the most dangerous part of the trip and the Russians can see us from their positions and, and people are trying to do it as quickly as they can. We've come to Lusychansk to meet the famed commander of a battalion now fighting for these cities. A former politician called Petro Kuzik, he directs operations from this bunker. And we found him casting an eye over a shipment of shoulder-borne missiles. Your, your men know how to use these. Very, very easy. He likes the Spanish model. It's only got one safety catch. But he says he's going to need some bigger kit. He says the Russians have 20 times the number of tanks and artillery and 10 times more troops. The threat is ever present. There are drones in the air and unexploded missiles on the ground. City residents have learnt to weave around them. 100,000 used to live here, but now just a few souls call it home. But the situation's worse on the other side of the river. We are now uh, active state of war. Yeah. This is Severodonetsk. It's not very far. Here's what Ukrainian troops are doing in Severodonetsk. It's a brutal contest for the inner city. These pictures provided to Sky News by the battalion. Russian tanks open fire at close range and their artillery pounds, apartment blocks and businesses. But the Ukrainians have dug in, retaining 40 to 60 percent of the city, depending on the day, says the commander, although it isn't easy. Troops told us that the last bridge connecting the two cities was destroyed over a week ago. So they've come up with a fix, boats with ropes across the river. It may be dangerous, but it seems to work. І зараз мости зруйновані, ми там лодками, канатами, там вплав перед, ну, логістика важка. Who would choose to stay in this beleaguered spot? The president of Ukraine has called them the dead cities, but thousands remain despite attempts to evacuate them. Why, why are you still here? Why haven't you left? Look, the police, the police have been evacuating people. The police will get you out. A soldier does his best to persuade them to leave, and there's little time. Their commander fears a catastrophe if a nearby chemical plant explodes. And they know the battle for these cities may have only just begun.